What do we understand about the places in which we do not live? Where do we get our knowledge from? And is this an accurate picture? The term Orientalism was coined by key colonial thinker Edward Said. He argued that Orientalism was the way in which the West constructed a definition of the Eastern world without ever having visited these countries. The East is an umbrella term for the Asian, Arab and African way of life. British white scholars from the Enlightenment period used their philosophical and scientifically racist writings to describe the East as an uncivilised and mysterious entity. However, it was not just academic writings where such generalisations were found. These stereotypes also existed in paintings. In the Snake Charmer painting, the French artist depicts a naked child holding a serpent as an older man plays the flute. The artist has constructed this scene out of his imagination. However, those who saw the painting at the time would have thought he was present and observed this scene in reality. In doing so, the artist has suggested that nudity was a regular and public occurrence in the East. In contrast, the second painting presents the East as passive by representing fully clothed women. Unfortunately, the invention of photography in 1839 did little to contribute to a greater authenticity of photographic representations of the Orient. Instead, photographs were frequently staged and embellished to appeal to the Western imagination. So, what does Orientalism look like today? Let's take the films Aladdin and Mulan. Both films are an imagination of Walt Disney's perception and oversimplification of life in the East. Aladdin begins with the song Arabian Nights, where one of the lyrics are, it's barbaric but hey it's home. Said would argue that referring to the setting of Aladdin as barbaric is a negative stereotype, and what might seem barbaric to the West is completely normal for the East. But how sure can we be that this film is even set in the Arab world in the first place if Disney has created a fusion of lots of different customs? Aladdin wears a fez, which is Turkish, whilst Jasmine's headpiece reflects Indian fashion, so are they following the Muslim or Hindu faith? But hold on a minute, she also has a pet tiger associated with Bangladesh. What a crazy mixture, right? Let's not forget when the live action Aladdin was released, Jasmine's dad was no longer the cheerful sultan we saw in the cartoons, but instead he fit with the strict western ideal of a controlling father. In Milan, when she's disguised as a man, everyone pays attention to her. She becomes a hero, but as a woman, no one pays attention to her, even when she warns them of danger. Here, gender roles in Asia are made to seem wrong instead of different, which is a recurring theme in the study of Orientalism. Mulan is also shown wearing a kimono, which is Japanese and not Chinese. This is a classic example of the Western generalisations of Asian cultures. For those who have watched Mulan, the role of the dead ancestors is an important part, but portrayed in a strange way for comedy purposes. This is complete disregard of Eastern cultures as worship to ancestors is a crucial part of Chinese life. Now, no one is saying Disney's evil. Movies are of course for entertainment, but they should also be educational. They're shaped by experiences of people, places and events. Think of all those children who watched Aladdin or Mulan repeatedly throughout their childhood. What perceptions are now ingrained in their minds? So there you have it, Orientalism in under five minutes. Where else have you seen Orientalism being displayed in your daily life? Thank you for watching.